Hey team, welcome back to the channel, man. I am stoked to see you. So today we're going to be going over TC 3-25.26. And if you know anything about me and my Stokermatic channel, you know that land navigation and map reading skills are extremely near and dear to my heart. And, and if that's something that you're into and you haven't already done so, check it out. There's a link right there. And there's always a link down in the description uh, if you want to go have some fun and get outdoors. So in this video, I'm going to give you some standard board questions, right? And then I'll leave a little bit of a pause for you to be able to answer the question. And then at the end, I'll give you some situational questions because you, you need to know both, right? You really do. And the Army, if you're not tracking, is moving towards situational questions for all of our promotion boards, whether we're talking about the Sergeant Promotion Board or Staff Sergeant's Promotion Board. And you're going to see even more situational questions being ingrained in Best Warrior competitions as well. And this is an area that's probably on everybody's MOI, you know, for, for both. Uh, and so let's get this thing going. Along the way, I'll also give you some nuggets, some things to do, to say, to not to do, or whatever. So what is the definition of a map? Right, so a map is a graphical representation of a portion of the Earth's surface drawn to scale as seen from above using colors and symbols to represent both natural and man-made features. And so, you know, you can say that a lot of different ways, um, but, but that's kind of the book answer. Where would you find useful information that will help you read a map? You will find useful information in order to read a map in the legend now, notice that I, I let off with a piece of the answer in, or a piece of the question in my answer, and I did that for a reason. A, it comes off, quite frankly, way more professional. I'm speaking uh, not so bullet-like in my language when I do that, you know, as opposed to in the marginal information. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can, you can do that, right? But it would be much easier and better to say, First Sergeant, I will find information to help me read a map in the margin of the map. Yeah. Also slows down the board a little bit. Gives you some more control. That's what it's all about, really, is controlling the story. What are the colors on a map, and what do they represent? All right, so the colors on the map include black. I mean, black is for man-made features, such as roads or buildings. So brown is going to be used for, uh, to help depict elevation, right? relief. These are contour lines. And we'll have red-brown, especially on a, on, a, on a map that's red-light readable. And so it may not be red, it may be red-brown. And again, these are going to be for uh, populated areas, man-made features, highways, big, larger museums, things of this nature. We don't often say white, and so that, right, those are the five primary colors. Uh, but there is another color that's on a map, and that's white. And white is also for uh, vegetation or the lack thereof. And it would be vegetation under three feet. Maybe it's a clear-cut area. Maybe it's a golf course, things of this nature. Still important to help us read a map. So the next question is, how many norths are there on a map? Ladies and gentlemen, there are three norths on a military map. You have grid north, you have true north, and you have magnetic north. Most oftentimes, grid north and true north are going to be the same. But you're going to look in the declination diagram to understand the difference in the relationship between all three. And speaking of the declination diagram, what does that display? And of course, as we just kind of said, that, that shows the angular difference between grid north and magnetic north. And you'll take this into account so that you can go from a an angle or an azimuth or a bearing that you would pull from a map and be able to use a compass and or back and forth to go from a compass to a map. And how do you do that? If you just remember Lars, if you just remember Lars, you'll, you'll always remember left, add, right, subtract. 
What are the two techniques for using a lensatic compass? Right, so the two techniques for a lensatic compass is the center hold method, right, as here, and then the compass to cheek method up here, right? What are the five major terrain features? I actually asked this uh, in, in my board. I, I had land navigation and, and uh, map reading uh, on our last competition board, and and when I asked this question, I, I was trying to give uh, trying to give some people some, some help, you know. And I was like, "Is there? You're trying to help a so?" I was asked it is a situational question. Right? I was like, "Hey, you know, a soldier is you know, you guys are out in the field and like, hey, man, how, how do I read this map, Sar Big Sarge? Right? Is there anything that you can do to help understand how to read?" contour lines on a map you know and i was just kind of use my fist and things that and nobody got it because we don't we don't talk about this enough somebody did give me an acronym of uh hidden valley saddle ranch dressing so i, I give him props for that because i i haven't heard that one in a long time and however you do it I, you just need to know what your five major train features are and hidden valley saddle ranch dressing is, is an easy one to do that so hidden hills right Valley is for valley. Saddle is for saddle. Or you could also hidden valley. Yeah, whatever. Saddle ranch is for a ridge. Dressing is for depression. Hidden valley, saddle, ranch, dressing. So we got all five, right? If you also just think about a fist, you know, how can I use this to teach somebody? It's too easy. I have hills, right? I have hills right there. I have a valley out in between if I, know, if I open up my hand. A saddle is the point connecting two hills. The ridge is what connects multiple hilltops together. And then depression is right there, right? What are the three minor terrain features? That's cliff, draw, and spur. Cliff, you know, and you can still use your hand, right? So cliff is, is vertical. Contour lines are extremely close together. If you, and, and again, you, you can just think about your hand. And these are smaller terrain features. So maybe it's a, it's a, it's a midget, midget hands, right? <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. And those are my standard uh, situational or standard uh, board questions here, right? And we'll get into some situational questions. I kind of already gave you one. Uh, but here's another one. You're preparing to conduct a class on land navigation. How are you going to resource, prepare, and execute this training? I think in some way or another, you're going to hear this style of question. And you've been tasked to, to teach a class, to conduct some sergeant's time training. Sergeants, we teach, we coach, and we mentor. How, are you, how, how do you do this? And so, the, you know, this is a way to interweave some book knowledge about from, from the TC, right? But more, more than that, you need to be able to talk about the eight-step training model. You need to be able to talk about troop leading procedures. You need to ex be able to explain how you're going to resource uh, what, what you need, whether it's getting with your supply and ordering some supplies, going to f task C and getting being a, taking a signature card holder down there with you. About preparing everything that you need, your lesson plan, your outline, getting signed in roster. All of these things that you want to be able to put together that you're going to need on the back end. Getting a, an assistant instructor. Doing rehearsals. Certifying that, that assistant instructor. Preparing a con op if need be. If you're conducting a convoy or, or mounted uh, operations to get to where you want to do some dismounted operations, then you got to talk about you know, dispatching. How are you going to implement safety features? You know, do a draw, a, a risk assessment, right? It's going to be on the packing list for everybody. And then the actual conducting the class, 
whether we're using just a lecture method aided by some handouts, maybe it's a whiteboard, maybe it's a two-part thing that we're going to do something in a classroom environment, and then move out, right? You could do that too. Right, so, and that's the thing with situational questions. There's not just one way. And when you're given a situational question, don't let it marinate in, inside your bones, you know, for more than three seconds before you start talking. And don't ask a question of the board member uh, because as as no bueno. So however you want to say all that, and, and what I would challenge and, and encourage you to do is just start talking, putting a the, the, the question in your first part of your answer. First sergeant, I would, and if I was assigned to teach a class on land navigation in order to prepare and execute this, the first thing I would do, now that amount of time I just did, it took a few seconds, right? And in that time, I can start thinking about what, what is it that we do every time we get ready to conduct training? Oh, so in order to uh, plan to execute this training, I'm going to get into DTMS, and I'm going to print the TE and O for the specific classes that we're going to teach. And I'm going to review those to standard. And then based on the, on the actual class, I'm going to order maps, protractors, and I'm going to get with supply to sign out compasses. I'll create a packing list for our practical application purposes and ensure that every soldier has, uh, you know, water source, whistle, MRE, you know, all of these things that, that I'm going to want that soldier to have. And then we're going to, uh, in, a, in a controlled environment, I'm going to have myself and my assistant instructor who I will have certified that they're good to go to teach this class. And I will bring our books. We'll have our sign-in roster. We'll have all of our materials that we need, and we're going to conduct this class using a lecture method and some demonstration, some hands-on before we go out for our evaluation. And then we're going to go out to the site. I'm going to have already gotten with, with the S3 and made that land request. Or maybe we're going to do it on an urban environment, and that's fine too. And I will have... Prior to that, I've gone. I will have validated the course myself to whatever standard that we're going for. If it's a time standard, I will give a safety brief prior to everybody stepping off. I'll do some PCCs before anybody leaves the AO. I'll ensure that everybody's moving in groups uh, of two, right? Moving out in pairs. When everybody comes back, I'll, I'll take their answer sheets and I will let them know right then and there if they're a go or no go at this station. And I'm going to take my sign-in roster and, and my evaluation sheets and I'm going to give them back to my training room so that they can be uploaded into DTMS. We can get some daggum credit for that training. You say anything close to that and boom, man, you are go at this station. <laughs> A uh, soldier's having difficulty understanding how to read contour lines, right? We, just, we already went over this. How, how will you teach this soldier? So, I mean, you could use your fist, right? Uh, and if somebody's having a hard time, like we're trying to, we're, what we're talking about is giving life to a map, right? Trying to give life to a map. So you could take a soldier out, physically out, and find a major train feature and have the map so that you can see what the map is actually doing. Like, hey, man, you, you see these um, a circle of line, circles of lines, right? These are called contour lines. You can see there's a circle with another circle inside going all the way up just to a small point. Like that, that's a, called a hill. And look, look right here. This, this actually is this hill, right? You could have make a sand table. You could make a sand table and, and draw a lot of these features together. When you start to see in that, that two-dimensional drawing turn into a three-dimensional object, that's when people start to understand how to read a map. Last situational question is, during a field exercise, you overhear a soldier complaining about using a lens added compass, saying, I have a compass on my phone, man, and, and you know, and a government-issued GPS device. Like, come on, man, wh wh why do I have to use this, this old-school compass? What is your response? So, you know, when you think about this, you know, and I think this could also be something that would come across in a variety of different subject areas. 
how are you going to respond to a soldier who's who's essentially not grasping our principles of training, right? Who's not grasping why we do what we do, who doesn't understand our Mets, who doesn't understand peer to peer. That That's like the root cause of, of this question or this concern, this gripe, this complaint from the soldier. Soldier doesn't even know the right question to ask. And so soldier based off of inconvenience asks a question. Why am I doing PMCS again? We just did it last Monday, and literally nothing's moved. Why are we doing this this way? Why are we doing that that way? Like, soldiers bring about complaints like this, but it's truthfully, it's because they don't understand the right question to ask. And so as you're answering, whether it's this specific question of why are we using Lensatic Compass, or why, why do we do the things that we do, I need you to remember you know, 7-0, I need you to think about training. Training to fight. Training to sustain. Training to maintain. We train to standard. If you, if you regurgitate any thing like that, tough and realistic training, having depth in our defense... actually going through and using a pace plan. Just think about why we do what we do. We do what we do so that we can locate, close with, and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver, and then repel the enemy's assault by fire and close combat. Think about what our mission is as soldiers, as guardians of freedom and the American way of life. That's how you want to. That's how I would submit to you to approach this style of a question of why we do what we do. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you have some questions about land navigation, leave some comments down uh, below. Or if you, if there's another subject area that you want uh, that we need to go over uh, in a study guide kind of style conversation or questions or whatever, you know, let me let me know and we can do that as well. If you have anything else that, that you need, man, leave it down below. We'll help can generate uh, this conversation. Consider sharing this uh, uh, video out with some of your battle buddies and your peers, and we can continue to grow a community and, and a dialogue that's open and honest and authentic so that we can continue to learn from each other as iron sharpens iron. If you did enjoy it, man, make sure you smash that like button. And until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.